Reggie's color. I'm going to switch the lights. Reggie's colors. Well, good morning, everyone. Great to see you all here this morning as others continue to join in. I just want to say uh, at this part, if you're not tuned in on the radio, your car radio, you will get it on 108 FM. And um, if you're having any bother uh, tuning in, well, just say to one of the men, um, they maybe will be able to help you to get tuned in, but it'll, it'll come across a lot clearer then um, if you're able to listen to it in the car. And you can keep your windows up so you're not... Uh, getting the cold breeze uh, here this morning but we thank you so much for coming and uh, we're going to hand over to the uh, worship group again I'm sure you've been blessed as you've been listening to them and they're going to lead us again in our worship this morning thank you That's the great note of victory on this Easter Sunday morning, uh, that he lives, and because he lives, we can face tomorrow. That is, for those of us who are saved, those who have trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. And that's the great message of the Christian church today, that Jesus Christ is not in the grave, he's not in the tomb, but he's alive, and he's risen from the dead. He's conquered sin, he's conquered death, 
conquered the grave, conquered Satan, and he lives in the power of an endless life. First Corinthians chapter 15, I want to read a number of verses as we really uh, focus upon the resurrection this morning. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 1, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that he was seen of about five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And last of all he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. And then down to verse 20, But now is Christ risen from the dead, and become the firstfruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even in Christ, or so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, uh, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. What a great note of victory this morning. We rejoice in this and let's do that as we come to the Lord in prayer and as we commend our time to him, seek his blessing upon it, but as we worship him uh, this morning for the great note of victory. Let's all pray. Our God and our Father, as we bow before you this morning, we do indeed come to thank you for this resurrection morning. Thank you for the great privilege of gathering together as your people to come and to worship you. And we want to thank you for all the help already given. The worship group have been leading us this morning. And we rejoice today that because Jesus lives, we can face tomorrow. We thank you today that our Saviour, that he is not in a tomb. We thank you, our Father, that he has conquered sin, conquered death, the grave, and Satan. And we rejoice, our Father, that for those of us today who believe in him, believe in the one who is the resurrection and the life, that we are on the victory side. We come today, our Father, to pray your blessing upon us. We thank you that we can meet together again as a church. You know all that's been happening over these past months, over this past year. But we thank you, Father, that we can gather in this fashion and uh, worship you. And Father, we do pray today that we will uh, worship you in, in the beauty of holiness, uh, that we will worship you in spirit and in truth. And Lord, we thank you that there's no greater truth than the fact that Jesus Christ is alive and that he lives forevermore. Bless all gathered in. We commend them all to you. Bless those who'll be watching online as well. We think of those not able to meet with us. We commend them to you. We know that in our own church fellowship, there are those that have been in hospital in this past week. We think of, of Stephen in hospital today, and we, we commend them all to you, Lord, and your blessings to be upon them and upon their families, and that you'll carry them through these days. We think of those who are elderly, those who are shut in, that they, our Father, as well, would know the help of God in amazing ways. But bless our Father the proclamation of your word today. We ask our Father that you'll speak to all of our hearts. We thank you for the boys and girls that are with us here this morning. And Lord, we pray that you'll bless as we speak to them for a few moments. And then, Father, as we turn to your word a little later on, as we continue uh, looking at the, the, the Gospel of Matthew, we thank you for those who have been reading your word to our hearts, uh, reading it to us this past week on, online. And Father, as they've taken us through the Easter story, we pray, O oh God, that again you will bless and minister to our hearts today. So, Father, we commend all to you, thanking you again for this great uh, day of victory. And thanking you, Father, uh, for the wonderful truth and your grace that has revealed it to us. And we pray, Father, that you'll bless it uh, to us today. And we ask it all in Jesus' precious name. 
Amen. And amen. Well, again, I, I just want to uh, welcome you all. Thank you all for coming. And uh, it's just so great to see so many here this morning. We know circumstances have been so different throughout this past year. And uh, throughout these past months, we haven't been able to, to meet together as a church um, in the building. And uh, it's just great that even, say, on this Easter Sunday morning, we're able to meet here at the motocross. We have entitled this weekend, Christ at the Cross. And what a blessed time we had on Friday evening as we remembered the death of the Lord Jesus Christ and as we broke bread and partook of the cup, uh, we had such a blessed time, especially, I uh, hope you've seen the cross over to your right if you haven't seen it. Uh, if you weren't here on Friday night, it just lit up so beautifully, uh, really, as we re remembered the Lord and the, see the darkness descended and uh, the cross really stood out. Uh, today we rejoice that it's uh, the empty tomb uh, that really stands out in the great note of victory in that. We thank you for coming. Do please remember this evening uh, that we're back here again for six o'clock. We invite you to come along, encourage you to come, encourage you to bring others as well. We're looking forward to a special testimony from Gordon Thompson. Gordon is from Scotland. Gordon has been in the church maybe five, six years ago. A very fascinating, very uh, most interesting testimony and certainly amazing uh, the grace of God that has saved him and how the Lord has been blessing him and using him and he serves the Lord with faith mission and we're looking forward to that tonight so do please uh, come along this evening and uh, come and be blessed really within your own soul as you hear of what God has done in his life and do you also uh, note uh, this morning that there is the opportunity over to my right here there's a couple of men uh, for the offering uh, we thank you for those who have already given towards that I know you haven't been able to do it for a number of months now uh, but you'll see the big uh, you'll see the big bin really there that's sitting and the men will be there and they'll be able to receive the offering if you have come prepared for that this morning can I say also that we're uh, this week we're planning to be back into the building uh, into our church building Wednesday evening we're going to start back with our prayer meeting uh, normally we wouldn't have a prayer meeting in Easter week but this year we know it is so different and we're not able to be away the same so we look forward to meeting again uh, in the building on Wednesday evening at 8 o'clock and we finish up approximately at 9 o'clock and then next Sunday morning uh, we will be in the church at 11 a.m. we're just going to have the Sunday morning service 11 a.m. through to quarter 10 to 12 uh, well we'll see how the the time goes but uh uh, do remember that next week we will seek to maintain the social distancing, the wearing of masks and we want everybody to be kept safe with how we bring you into the building and then how you leave the building as well. Because we're back to the building there'll be no more uh, morning manna. Uh, that will not be on uh, Facebook or on YouTube uh, this week. Do you also want to say thank you again to all who have helped out and we'll, I'll mention more of that this evening. But we appreciate those who have been involved in, in setting all this up. These things don't just happen. It takes a lot of work in the background, a lot of work beforehand. And we appreciate all the work of uh, so many who have been involved in setting up uh, for uh, today. But we do indeed wish you all a very happy Easter. We trust that you'll keep safe and that you'll know the Lord's blessing really over these, uh, over these days and uh, that we all will safely get through COVID and uh, that we will not be affected uh, anymore uh, by it at all. We already said this morning, great to see all the boys and girls here. And um, normally if uh, the boys and girls were in the church, one thing I would love to find out uh, from the boys and girls is, is how many Easter eggs you got. Now I've been talking to some of the boys and girls throughout this uh, throughout this past week and over the last day or two and I think some maybe have got as many as five or six uh, big Easter eggs and I'm sure they're going to enjoy uh, the Easter eggs. Now the Easter egg, um, the big Easter eggs normally, um, whenever we think of them we, we, we think of Easter time um, because uh, well, we think of the Easter message because the Easter egg is empty inside isn't it? And I remember when I was smaller, it wasn't like that because they used to put the Smarties inside the Easter eggs. I, I don't know if they still do that or not. Um, but whenever I was uh, small, that's what they would have done. 
But the big Easter eggs now, they don't have anything inside. And of course, it reminds us of the empty tomb. But boys and girls, I have a question this morning, and I'm not going to ask it to you. I'm going to ask it to your mum or dad. So mums and dads, you need to be listening this morning. I want you to blow your horn, whoever is the driver of the car. I want you to blow your horn if you can honestly say this morning that your children fold their clothes. Oh dear, 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 we're not doing very well. Not one this morning. Boys and girls, do you not fold your clothes? Whenever you get up in the morning time, you make your bed and then you fold your pyjamas and you maybe put them in under the duvet or in under the uh, in under your pillow. You don't do that. Well, I have to be honest, boys and girls. Whenever I was your age, I never folded my clothes. Whenever I went to bed at night time and I got dressed for bed, I didn't fold or took off my school uniform whenever I was in high school. I never folded my clothes. Generally, I have to be honest, I just put them on the chair. I will be honest, I didn't throw them on the floor, but I put them on the chair and there they were. And well, they were all sort of crumpled up, so they were. And boys and girls, I brought something with me this morning now. And I hope you can see this. Um, and everything here. Hope you can see this, boys and girls. But what I have in my hand, and I am, it was clean, so hasn't been used. It's a hanky. And boys and girls, I don't know if you carry ever a hanky with you, but certainly whenever we get older, I find that I had to have a hanky with all my time, with me all the time. And boys and girls, if you ever were to go near my pocket, the truth is you would never find it folded up. And it's usually always crumpled up, so it is. But yet, boys and girls, whenever I read the Easter story, I read something most interesting in John chapter 20. Because we talk about the tomb being empty, but actually, there was something in the tomb. Whenever Mary Magdalene and Peter and John, they went to the tomb early in the morning and they didn't know what, the, what it was going to be like. They in fact expected it all still to be closed up. They were wondering, how were they going to roll a stone away from the door? But whenever they got there, the angel had already rolled the stone away. And boys and girls, we know that, that, that Mary Magdalene, she was, she was first there and she was afraid to go in. And then, and then John, he arrived. It was like a race, it seemed, boys and girls, because it tells us that John overtook Peter as they were running to the tomb. So John must have been fitter than Peter. John got to the tomb and he saw the stone rolled away, but he wouldn't go in. But whenever Peter got there, well, Peter, he, Peter was always somebody who was very curious and always asking questions. And boys and girls were told that he was the first one to go into the tomb. And whenever he went into the tomb, what he saw were the grave clothes. He saw the grave clothes of Jesus, but Jesus was gone. And boys and girls, we can sometimes wonder, well, why, why, why were all the grave clothes there? Well, actually, back in those days, we're told as well that sometimes people, they would have broken into a, a, a grave or into the tomb. And they didn't steal the body. But what they wanted to do was they wanted to steal the grave clothes. And the grave clothes, boys and girls, were lots of pieces of cloth that had been wrapped around the body of the person who died. And that's what had happened to the Lord Jesus Christ. But what we're told is that over his head, there was a hanky. Sometimes it's called a napkin. Sometimes it's called an apron. But boys and girls, really it was a hanky. And the interesting thing about it all, boys and girls, and I hope I can do this this morning because, well, you know, I still don't really, well, I never fold clothes still. But boys and girls, whenever Peter looked in and he saw the grave clothes, they were all sitting in a, in a pile. But boys and girls, the napkin was all nicely folded up, so it was. And we can ask the question, well, why was it folded up? Well, again, it's believed that it was folded up because it was a message from the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, the, the grave clothes there were telling us that Jesus had risen from the dead, that the Savior had risen, that he had gone. But the grave clothes were there. The napkin was saying that actually Jesus is going to come again. Because the story, the theory behind it all is that a master, somebody who had servants, whenever they had their dinner, 
what they would do is they would be sitting at the table, the servant would be standing to the side, and when it came to the end of the meal, boys and girls, the servant had a napkin. And the napkin was there and, and um, would have cleaned his, his mouth with the napkin. And if he got up, boys and girls, and he left the napkin in a, in a mess, and it wasn't folded up, it meant that he was finished. And boys and girls, whenever he folded the napkin up and he left the table, what it said to the servant was this, I'm coming back again. I'm coming back again. Maybe he went out to do a message or something and he said that he was coming back. And that's the great message of the Jesus, of Jesus Christ being risen from the dead. He's coming back again. And he's coming back because he's alive and he's coming back to take those who are saved to heaven with him for all of eternity and boys and girls the great message of easter is that jesus has died on the cross for the punishment of our sins and if we put our trust in him whenever jesus comes back again we are going to be with him in heaven forever are you saved today boys and girls uh, parents are you saved today granny grand are you saved today have you put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ? And if Jesus comes today because he could come today, will you go to be with Jesus forever and ever? What a message is the message of the gospel, boys and girls. Jesus Christ took the punishment for your sins. He's alive today. But he, one day he'll come back and he'll take those who are saved to be with him. I trust that you will be saved or you are saved. And that you will be with him forever and ever. So boys and girls, I think you've got work packs and all. Again, we want to thank Leslie uh, for doing all that. I think maybe you've already got Easter eggs. And uh, you can work at the packs there uh, uh, in your car. And I know that uh, you will enjoy doing that. I'm going to ask the worship group to come now. And they're going to minister in song to us again. Thank you. See what I'm 
invite you, if you have a Bible there with you uh, this morning, to turn with me to the Gospel of Matthew. Um, throughout this week we've been blessed as different ones have been bringing God's Word to us um, on, on YouTube and on, on Facebook. And they've, they've taken us really through the, the, the Gospel of Matthew, the, the accounts really leading up, uh, right up until today. And I don't know if you've listened to it this morning, but Anna and Lydia uh, were reading to us from uh, Matthew chapter 20 this morning. And really that's what I want us to really just focus our thoughts on this morning. Um, really as we consider God's word on Friday night, we were, we were looking at the, the, the crucifixion um, in, in Matthew chapter 27. But Matthew chapter 28, actually I want to take us to the very last three verses this morning we were looking at why the cross on on friday night and this morning I just want to ask the question why the resurrection well the reality is there are many answers that we could give but there are three that really the lord has drawn me to this morning uh, here in uh, matthew chapter 28 and uh, verses 18 to 20 these verses in fact will be well known to many of us if not to all of us because often they're called the Great Commission. But Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 it says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Margaret Sangster Fippen may not be uh, somebody that we have ever heard of, but uh, way back in the 1950s, um, her father, British Minister W.E. Sangster, began to notice some uneasiness in his throat and indeed dragging in his leg. Whenever he went to the doctor, he found that he had an incurable disease that, that caused progressive muscular atrophy. His disciples would, sorry, his, his muscles would, would gradually waste away, his voice would fail, his throat would soon become unable to swallow. Sangster threw himself into his work in, in British home missions, figuring that he could still write and that he would have even more time for prayer. Let me stay in the struggle, Lord, he pleaded. He therefore wrote articles and books and helped organize prayer cells throughout England. And then whenever people spoke to him, asked him how he was, or people had pity upon him, he would have said this. He says, I'm only in the kindergarten of suffering. But gradually, his legs became useless. Eventually, his voice went completely. But yet he was still able to hold a pen shakily. On Easter morning, just a few weeks before he died, he wrote a letter to his daughter, and in it he said these words. It is terrible to wake up on Easter morning and have no voice to shout, He is risen. But it would be still more terrible to have a voice and not want to shout, He is risen. Praise God this morning that we're able to shout, He is risen. We know that we find those words in Matthew chapter 28 and verse 6, where it says, He is not, the angel said, He is not here, for He is risen. And that's the great note of the Christian church today. People often ask the question, well, what's the difference between Christianity and all the other religions of the world? And I say all the other religions because... Because they all can be put together into one. The thing about religions of the world is you say to them today, well, where's your leader? Many of them will take you to a tomb or to a grave and say, that's where our leader is today. But you talk to us as Christians, ask us where our leader is, where Jesus is. Well, today we will take you to an empty tomb because praise God, he is risen. Many reasons we can look at as to why the Lord Jesus Christ rose and triumphed from the dead. But three I just want to highlight from these verses that we've been looking at here this morning. I want you to note, first of all, we celebrate the resurrection because of the possessing 
of all power. The possessing of all power. Verse 18 it says, And Jesus came and spake unto them. Remember, he's now the risen, the resurrected Savior. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Jesus certainly wouldn't have said this if he had still been dead in the tomb. No power would have been his had he still been without life in the grave. But, but in rising in triumph from the dead, all power in heaven and on earth, and on earth was given now unto the Lord Jesus Christ. The word power, we, you may have another version there with you this morning. You probably will see that it, it is uh, translated as the word authority. And that's what it means. All authority was given unto the Lord Jesus Christ. We know that he was, yes, he was fully God before he rose from the dead and that, that he was always all-powerful. The Lord Jesus Christ was always omnipotent. That is, he is all power, but in rising from the dead, having previously died in our place upon the cross, being the sin bearer for all of mankind, it resulted in him being head of the new creation. And that's what it's talking about here in Matthew 28 and verse 18. Jesus Christ, in rising from the dead, he was now exalted over all. The believer's Bible commentary, it says this about it all. It says, in one sense, of course, he always had all authority. But here he was speaking of authority as head of the new creation. Since his death and resurrection, he had authority to give eternal life to all whom God had given to him. He had always had power as the firstborn of all creation. But now that he had completed the work of redemption, he had authority as the firstborn from the dead. And what a truth that is this morning, that was something as well that the Apostle Paul speaks of in Philippians chapter 2 in verses 9 to 11. It says, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name above, uh, which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And what a blessing this morning for those of us who are saved. That what we've done is that we have bowed before the Lord Jesus Christ at the foot of the cross in repentance. And today how wonderful that we can say my God and my Lord, my God and my Saviour. But yet what we see here in Philippians chapter 2 is that one day every knee will bow. But the sad thing about it all is this, that if you do not bow before him in this life and acknowledge him as your Lord and Savior, that whenever you bow before him in the great eternity, you will bow before him as judge. And what you will hear from him, he will say to you, depart from me, ye curse it into everlasting fire. And that's why today we, we the, the, the word of, of God exhorts you to come to him today for salvation. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Yes, everybody will bow before him. But those who bow before him, acknowledging him as Lord and Savior in this life, will be with him in glory for all of eternity. But if you leave it until after you die, well, then you'll be cast into the place of outer darkness and you will perish forever and ever. All authority is given unto the Lord Jesus Christ. And the great truth today is this, that if you come and you bow before him now, he is the authority to give to you eternal life. You come and you confess your sins. You come and acknowledge that you're a sinner and thank him that he died on the cross for you. And that he has risen from the dead. And you call upon him and ask him to give to you eternal life. He is the authority to do that. He will give it to you. And that's the great message of triumph for many of us here today. That we know that whenever we bowed at the foot of the cross in faith. We called upon him for salvation. The burden of our sin had rolled away. 
And oh, the joy it entered in, the joy of sins forgiven, the joy of knowing that we're going to be in heaven. And oh, we thank God for that day whenever we were saved. Why the resurrection? Well, it, we see here the possessing of all power. But then I want you to note in verses 19 and 20, the proclamation to all people. Because in verses 19 and 20, it says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Because Jesus Christ is risen from the dead, the great message today for all the world is this, is that there's hope. So many in the world today, they're despairing because they feel there's no hope. Especially over this past year with, with all that's been going on with COVID. So many people, they feel so hemmed in and they feel so frustrated with everything. They don't see any hope at all. But yet whenever we look at the bigger picture in the world of sin, many people, oh, how we see things. They see things waxing worse and worse. They see sin abounding on every corner and they feel that there's no hope at all. But today the message of the resurrection is one of hope. One of hope because Jesus has told us who are his people to do what? To go into all the world, to teach all nations his word, to go and teach the message of the gospel, to go and to proclaim it. And the Bible tells us that, on, and that, that, that whenever all the saved are gathered up in heaven, there will be people who will be from every tribe, tongue and nation. It's a message that is for all of the world. What a challenge that is to those of us who are saved that as we believe that we're living in the final days that, that we seek to be witnesses of the gospel. That we seek to tell our neighbours. That we seek to tell those in our workplace. That we seek to tell those uh, not only in our own land but across this world. That Jesus Christ is alive and Jesus Christ is able to save to the uttermost if they put their trust in him. That's the great message of the gospel. It's a message for all of the world. It's a message for everybody. It's a message for people from every tribe, tongue and nation. It's a message for people from, uh, uh, of every face and of every place and of every race. It's a message that covers absolutely everybody. I wonder this morning, can I ask you the question, why are you here? Would it be that this morning that you're here because you received one of our invitation cards? Maybe it went through your letterbox and you find it and you thought, well, I'd like to go along to that. Or maybe somebody invited you along. Or maybe you saw it advertised on Facebook and you decided that you would come today. I wonder, have you ever, have you wondered to yourself why somebody has asked you to come? Or why has somebody gone to the effort of putting the invite through your letterbox and inviting you along here this morning? Well, can I say that it's because we know the power of his resurrection. The power of his resurrection because by Jesus Christ being alive, he has transformed our lives. He has taken us hell-deserving sinners and he has lifted us from the very gutters of sin and he has set us on the road, the road to glory, the road that will take us home to heaven. He has taken our lives and he has transformed our lives as he has made us more and more into the likeness of Jesus Christ. Practically, we're still not perfect, but positionally, we are perfect in the eyes of the Lord. And he has given us that great, that great hope within our hearts. And today we rejoice in the wonderful truth as we we're thinking with the boys and girls that Jesus Christ, he's coming again. And he's going to take us home to glory and there we will be with him forever and ever. All believers today, do we want to get this message out? Do we want to tell it to our neighbours? Do you want to come and hear about it more tonight? Do you want to invite others along this evening to come and to hear of how God has taken Gordon's life, a man who grew up really with no gospel, a man who had no thought for God, but a man today who is on fire for God, who is, who is rejoicing in the hope of the gospel. Well, we come tonight and invite others along to come and see what God 
can do within a heart and within a life. We see here the possessing of all power. We see the proclamation to all people. And then I want you to know thirdly, the promise of his always presence. Jesus is always with us. What a truth that is for those of us who are saved. He says in the verse 20, And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. I don't know of anything else that means more to see of people than this, that Jesus Christ is always with us. You see, this he couldn't do if he was still in the grave. This he couldn't do if he was still dead, if he was without life but being resurrected. We have the 100% assurance and the promise that Jesus Christ is with us. He's with us here today, but he's with us in all circumstances of life. He's with us if we go and proclaim the gospel to a lost world. He's with us whether times be good, bad, or indifferent. If it's in the deepest and the darkest valleys of life that we're going through, Jesus has promised that he'll be with us there. When danger surrounds us or whenever perhaps we, we are betrayed by friends. Remember, he was betrayed by his friend Judas. Or maybe whenever life rips the very heart out of us or when the way before us it seems too much for us, when temptation presents itself before us or whenever we feel inadequate for what's being asked of us. Jesus says, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. And what a blessing this is because of who he is. He's all powerful. He's the one in whom all authority resides. He loves us more than anyone else ever has. And there he has promised that he will never leave us nor forsake us. What a truth today that we get from the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. For those of us who are saved, what a blessed people we are today. We can look to him, we can trust in him, that he's the one who will never leave us, never forsake us, never fail us, and he'll help us in all of life's journey. We can go forward today, because Jesus is alive, he's risen from the dead, and he's with us at all times. And that's uh, the, uh, the prayer of our hearts today is that all of us will be able to go from here today saying, no, saying that I know that Jesus is with me and that he is with me always. The worship group are going to come and lead us in our closing song uh, this morning and then I will finish in a word of prayer. Thank you.
Thank you for this morning. Thank you for this uh, short time together, just for the great privilege of, re of celebrating the resurrection today. We come, Father, to thank you for our worship group and how they've been leading us and focusing our minds upon the cross, upon the resurrection, but most of all upon the, the risen Savior. And we rejoice today that he is alive, alive forevermore. And thank you, Father, for the great truths uh, that, that come to us as a result of all of this. Bless your word to all of our hearts this, uh, that we've been considering this morning. Continue to uh, to speak into hearts and lives. Today our prayer is that the unsaved will come and put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. That today uh, that he invites them to come and he's waiting for them to come and call upon him for salvation. Thank you that he's able to save them completely and give unto eternal life because all authority in heaven and on earth is given to him. Part us with your blessing. Uh, bless us as throughout this day and uh, bless again this evening as we come along and hear what you are able to do in the lives of the lost. We pray that you'll speak tonight and do a most mighty work amongst us. We commend ourselves to you and we ask it all. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, thank you so much again for coming this morning. Um, uh, if you follow the, the instructions of the, the men in the yellow jackets, really, uh, they'll uh, help you as you leave this morning. So we have no accidents uh, as you leave. It's almost like coming off the boat. So it is. You have to wait until you're told uh, what to do. And do remember the box for the offering, uh, and you can avail of that uh, this morning as well. But I do again remember this evening, 6 o'clock, and we look forward to a great time of blessing again. The worship group's going to continue to sing, uh, really, as you leave this morning. You'll continue to hear it on your radio uh, as you leave. But thank you, and God bless. Mm -hmm.
about my sin. It's about how Jesus came to be born once so that we could be born again. It's about the stone that was rolled away. 